and it's right here and you know like i got highlighted here that they've been put on christ like a garment they've been clothed with christ for them to do that means that they are like job 29 4 job says that he put on righteousness and it clothed him justice was his robe and his turban because he was a high priest and he was a judge of the people so he there like if you're putting on the behaviors of christ that means you're putting on the righteousness of christ that means you're doing yes. the same obedience as christ just like it Yeshua says to your if you're a disciple of yeshua you're doing his behavior amen amen brother excellent text from job it reminded me when you read job of romans 6 where paul says same author know you not that those of you that have been baptized um into christ have been baptized into his death therefore we're buried with him in baptism and we are raised talking about coming up out of the water to walk in the newness of life that's right so so we're no longer slaves to sin but we're slaves to righteousness this is the message of romans chapter right. six so it's beautiful so why why do we need to be baptized into christ because we, because we've transgressed the law but when we come up out of baptism we're clothed with christ meaning we don't transgress the law, or we try right. not to transgress the law. <laughs> we live right. a life of righteousness. That's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, if you want to take it as a strict metaphor and say you're clothed yourself with Christ, or you've put on Christ, and imagine like an avatar of of Yeshua that you put on, then of course you're going to have to do the behavior of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So it, mm -hmm. it just it blows my mind out how, how they'll read verse 25, but then they'll skip verse 26. So not only do we have Job 29, 4, we also have Psalm 132, 9, where it says, let your priests be clothed with righteousness. Mm. Let your godly ones sing for joy. Same concept, mm. guys. To mm. be clothed in the sight of the Lord is to have righteousness, to do the right mm -hmm. behavior in the right heart. To be found naked in the sight of the Lord is to be in disobedience. Yes. Zechariah yes. 3, 4, he says, and he spoke and said to those who were standing before him, saying, remove the filthy garments from him. Again, he said to them, see, I've taken your iniquity away from you and will clothe you with festal robes. Beautiful. So take the dirty garments that are represent iniquity, take those away, put on the clean garments that represent right behavior, righteousness, which is the opposite of iniquity. Same thing in Revelation 3, 4, Yeshua tells the people in Sardis, but you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments. They will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. So now we have a direct correlation of your behavior, equaling your clothing is the same with Yeshua as you walk with him. Revelation mm -hmm. 3, 4. So there is this idiomatic reference of being clothed in righteousness in scripture. That means you're doing the commandments. You're doing the behavior of Yeshua. You're walking in right behavior. And that's why Paul would tell them, because he's converted these people and taught them Torah. He's telling them, you've been clothed with Christ. Mm. Yes. So Beautiful. That's, that's my understanding of it, brother. This is why he says at the end, for the, and for this reason, there's no Jew or Greek. Uh, slave or free, male or female, because the, the, the Judaizers, the influencers, they were telling these Gentile converts, you know, you're not Abraham's seed. If you if you weren't raised like us in Judaism and you weren't circumcised on the eighth day, you can't belong to Abraham. And Paul is saying, no, 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 that's, that's incorrect. Um, there's neither Jew nor Greek. For those of you that have been baptized into the seed, into the faith, into Christ, all synonymous, right. you put on Christ like a garment. Therefore, look, there's no there's no social hierarchy or gender hierarchy or or um, ethnic hierarchy. You know, obviously there was some um, ethnocentrism going on here in in Galatia. But um, yeah. so, if you belong to the Messiah, verse twenty nine, then you are Abraham's seed. You're part of that seed if you belong to the Messiah and your heirs according to the promise. So you're, you're a child of Abraham. You're an Israelite. I praise Yahweh. Yes, exactly. And to be an heir means you're a part of the covenant. So I mean, guess it's like following the trail of definitions. You know, mm -hmm. What's an, what are you an heir of? Well, eternal life in the kingdom of God. Okay. Well, what does it take? Well, that means you're in covenant with Yahweh in order to receive the benefit of that inheritance. Mm -hmm. Well, what are the terms of that covenant? Do the commandments. Yes, there's yes. No, there's, there are no other definitions in Scripture for these words, guys. Yes. So Paul <laughs> Paul is 100% reinforcing Torah because he's actually trying to you know, tell these people in Galatia that had been tricked by um, the party of circumcision in that region. Um, he even goes on in Galatians 6 to say that party of circumcision doesn't keep the law anyway. Yep. You know, yep. And so that they're another appeal to how he's been teaching them the law the whole time. And so this is why he's reminding them. And what I love about this is, like you read in verse 29, 
he goes and says, if you belong to Christ and you're Abraham's seed, so and heirs according to promise. And what he's really doing here, you know, if I, you know, I like to take a context um, of a passage. So if we back this up a little bit and mm -hmm. look at the passage in a big, in a broad stroke here, we see at the bottom, verse 29, he, he brings it back around mm. to what he introduced all yeah. the way back up here when he starts mentioning Abraham in verse 15. Yep. Or, yep. I'm sorry, it's even before that. It's even before oh, yeah. Up in 14, he, verse 6. Yeah. Or he's, 6. He's, he's, he's yeah. trying to get into this idea of, what you know, let me, let me remind you guys about Abraham. You know? Mm -hmm. And here's the things that happened with Abraham's life. Here's, you know, it was created him as righteous because he believed. And those. So he's trying to yeah. remind them of kind of the basic principles because from my understanding, and correct me if you have a different understanding, uh, Matthew, mm -hmm. but Galatians in this moment, specifically in chapter 3, he is addressing this idea that um, that the Pharisees had told them, you're not in covenant and you're not a seed of Abraham unless you're circumcised. And mm -hmm. only then are you in with Abraham's seed and of the covenants. And he's trying to tell them, look, man, Abraham was in covenant for decades before he got circumcised. Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Abraham talks about this in Romans 4. Yeah. So, you know, Abraham's faith definitely led to faithfulness. Faith is the root word, right? Of faithfulness. But that's not where it began. I mean, you know, think about yourself, everybody listening. I was raised, I'll use me. I was, I've been raised in church my whole life, right? That doesn't mean I'm perfect. I've disobeyed my mom and dad. You know, I had faith, but it took me a little while. It took me to, to maturity to get more and more faithful. Now, praise Yahweh. I'm, I'm more faithful now in my mature walk than I was, you know, 20, 30 years ago, but I've still got some maturing to do. I'll mature all the way until the you day too. that Yahweh raised me from the dead. <laughs> um, you know, Brother Sean and I agree, and we, we would have to admit, we still need that guardian sometimes. We need that guardian to slap us on the wrist and say, no, Matthew, no, Matthew, we don't do that. We don't, yeah. we don't talk that way. We don't treat others that way. And I say, yep, that's right. I need to look to Yeshua. I need to look to Yeshua. <laughs> I mean, I it, to me, it comes along with my understanding of the promise of the resurrection where we get this wonderful new incorruptible body with this heart that has his laws perfectly on there and I'll never sin again. So that mm -hmm. means by just logical deduction, then I know that while I'm in this flesh, I'm going to struggle with sin from time to time. Sure, Paul, sure. Paul tries to address this in Romans 7 leading into chapter 8. You know, this idea, oh, wretched men of sin, who's going to save me from this body of death? You know, and that's because then he leads into the resurrection and, you know, all the way into culmination to Romans 8, 19. Um, and because he's he's struggling with the same issue, right? He's He also is fearing doubt. I mean, the, the disciples were with Jesus, as far as I can tell, night and day during their discipleship process. Mm -hmm. And I know some people like to argue it was a year or three years. It's inconsequential. Mm -hmm. I wish I could be with Jesus for five minutes. Absolutely, they, brother. <laughs> You have the law right there in front of you. I mean, it, it yeah. yeah. And they awesome. were with the nine day camping out, walking around, you know, going on both trips together. Like they're mm. all over the place with Yeshua, the son of God, the word made oh, flesh, the perfect man. example, love mm. incarnate. And they still struggled after he left. That's right. They still That's had right. moments of fear and doubt and disbelief. They still needed to disciple. I mean, all the way up into Acts 10, Peter's still learning Torah. <laughs> yeah, man. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. So. I yeah, we, we always talked him. about when he denied Yeshua, you know, that before Yeshua was crucified, Peter denied him three times. And Peter, before that, had been given the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, the Father had revealed to, to Peter who Yeshua was, the Son of the living God. But yet Peter said, no, I don't know, I don't know that man. That could arguably be the greatest sin, to deny Yeshua. So right. then we're, we're, but yet we're talking about the apostle that stood up, you know, not long after that on the day of Shavuot on Pentecost and he starts preaching and 3000 souls are saved. So, you know, we don't, don't, don't lose heart and recognize, you know, just because you struggle don't mean you won't get better. And it doesn't mean Yahweh doesn't love you. And it doesn't mean Yahweh won't resurrect you from the dead. These saints that we read about in the scriptures, they went through the same things that we go through. And they needed that guardian. You need that guardian, that schoolmaster to teach you. And eventually we'll be mature and we will be justified, made right in Yahweh's sight, completely, fully, whole, immortal, perfect at the resurrection of, uh, of, of uh, the resurrection of the righteous. Um, which Yeshua will perform because he's been given authority to do that from the Father.